Okay, now I'm up here where the water wheel is going to end up. Well, I'm actually a little bit up from it. It's even going to go farther downstream. But this is all the holes that I had. Or pipe, whatever you want to call it. Okay. This water right here is coming from uh, where I'm going to get the source of the water for the water wheel. And the water wheel will either be right here or maybe down even farther. So if nothing else, it'll get even more drop. But to give you an idea, there's a lot of pressure on here. You can see it. Quite a bit of pressure. Pretty good volume of water too, just for this small of a pipe. What I'm gonna end up with to do the uh, water wheel is gonna be at least four inch pipe. I may go with six inch, I don't know. Uh, six inch would be great. And see if I can give you some kind of an idea of how far up that is. Because whenever the water stops, that means I've reached the same level that it's coming from up, upstream. Ah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to reach any higher. Okay, that's a good, uh, probably 15, 20 foot, and it's still not stopping. So, okay. Figure if it's 20 foot drop, I think it's gonna be more like 30 foot of drop. Cause that wasn't, I mean, that was still running. <laughs> That's a lot of water. Now, with this much water, well, not this much, this would work for a turbine, I think, which I will probably also do. But as far as a water wheel, this won't work. This is not enough. You've got the pressure, but you don't have the volume. Now, we will have the volume with a bigger pipe or a raceway or a waterway. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. Let's just stick this right over here close to the creek. So, with that much of a fall and this much potential, I think we will have no problem turning that alternator and we should make some decent power because there's a lot of water that comes out of this creek year round. It, it never stops. It slows some, but it never completely stops. Uh, we will have water to run our water wheel year round. Now, in the middle of the summer, it is going to... Uh, the, the speed of the water is going to slow down and it's not going to be quite as much power because, well, obviously the, the creek is going to slow down, you know, have less water, less potential. So, I think it will still power it. It will still run the alternator. It, it won't be as efficient. Uh, I'm losing a lot of efficiency because of the gearing that I have. Because I have some pretty high gearing and I'm losing a lot of the efficiency through the gearing. So we need some pressure. Well, I think I can get the pressure and I can get the volume with no problem at all. Um, I'm also going to probably use this line May even extend it down more and make a, a, a small micro hydro uh, turbine generator, which should work pretty good. That Daisy's wanting some attention. But anyway, let's get on down 
to the wheel and see what all we've done today. And I'll show you my gearing setup with the lawnmower transmission and how fast that thing can spin. All right. Well, what have we been doing here? We have the transmission mounted on the water wheel. Now what we did, I, I had a hand truck, a dolly, whatever you're gonna call it. Actually the bottom part of this, the bottom part of the dolly is what I used for the support on the box on Buster, on the back of Buster. It's the part that sticks out like that. So I had this laying around I just kind of cut the end of it off a little bit, stuck a couple pipes over it. I welded two hinges, one there and one over there. And that allows this whole thing to move up and down like this. And I took my linear actuator and welded it on here and there so that when it comes time to change the belt, I can do that. It picks it up, loosens the belt, and then when it's time to put the belt back on, just tighten it up. Okay, so what we have is we have this bicycle wheel for a pulley we have two pulleys here so i really have two choices but this one is the only one that really lines up properly with the bicycle wheel it still works i've had it on this one but with this one you get a five to one ratio from there to here this spins five times for every time the wheel turns over one time okay it's a little bit of increase then over here this will spin one time this will spin 21 times so this is a 21 to 1 ratio all right, so with five to one from here, and then 21 to one from here, this will spin over one turn, and it will make this spin over 105 turns. So figure, if you get this spinning, which I, uh, my other one would easily spin 60 RPMs, one turn per second. If I can get that spin in one turn per second, this will be spinning 6,300 RPM. So, uh, it really doesn't have to spin that fast. I could directly connect an alternator to this, wouldn't even need a pulley or anything. And it would be plenty to run an unmodified alternator, as long as we have the pressure. And I think we will, we have a lot of pressure up there. All right, now, we can give you an example of this uh, speed that this thing puts out. And I have an assistant here to help me. And whenever you're ready, there we go. You can see a little wheel turning. Faster. Yeah, a little faster. Even at that speed right there, that's spinning pretty fast. All right, go ahead and give it to guys. There we go. You can see how fast we're spinning. And you can hear that gear just, or that pulley just whizzing around. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's noisy, but uh, yeah, it is. yeah, you can see we have got this thing rigged up to uh, spin that alternator pretty fast, and it's not that hard to push this. As you can see, that's one finger. 
just pushing it very easy I mean it takes a little effort you know a little bit it's not bad though yeah I painted a little line on there yeah right there <laughs> that little line is just there to let you know how fast it's spinning but the problem is it spins so fast you can't see the line <laughs> but anyway I really did I welded the bolt to the hand truck there I'm gonna put another one through here um, after I got a drill I got that one drilled out I got to drill this one out to put bolts in and let's see oh on this bicycle wheel I had to take my knife and make little scratches all the way around you can see that they're all the way around it and uh, those are what helps that belt to bite without those scratches uh, the belt would slip so you get more traction on the belt with these little scratches in here And everything seems to work okay. Let's see, uh, let's try something here. Okay, there it is. Go ahead and give it some ribs. And I've got an alternator, it might get loud. You can see the alternator's turning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to have to fabricate something else. I think the best way to do it is going to be a direct connection from that shaft straight to the alternator because it should have plenty of RPMs. You don't need to lose any more uh, by putting a big pulley to a smaller pulley. That, that would be. See? That would crank it way up. That, that would be way more than the alternator is going to be built to stand. Uh, you can see I moved from that pulley over to this one. And that gave us a little bit more power. And it will turn that alternator no problem from the middle or I think a direct connection is what I want to do. No uh, pulleys or nothing. Just the alternator shaft straight to that. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do it. That's pretty much what we got so far. We just got the uh, transmission hooked up. Spins pretty good. I think I'm gonna go directly into the alternator with it. And I think I'm gonna be using this outside pulley because that seems to give it the most power. And the most power is what we're after. And I think I can just run a regular alternator. I don't even think I'll have to modify it uh, because it's gonna have plenty of RPMs. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, I guess that's probably going about do it for this video. Appreciate everybody watching. I'll see y'all on the next one.